Hey Luke, what's going on? It's Coach Benlin here. I'm just breaking down some of your swings from our last session. I put it all into a document again that I could send over to you. So let's uh, let's get right into it. So I want to start with some of the things that um, we should continue to monitor. Let me zoom in a little bit here. First off, we talked about it in the last video about landing close with the front foot at 45 degrees or less. And what that will do was it'll keep your whole front side closed. And we wanna stay closed as long as possible as we track the pitch in before we get that front foot down, go with the hip, and then we begin to open up. So landing close a good starting point to keep that whole front side closed. And we'll take a look at that in the video loop in a second as well. We also wanna to continue to monitor and improve leading with the knob, pulling the knob inside in front of the baseball like we worked on the last session, thinking with the knob rather than the barrel, All right? Knob, then barrel. Um, extending through the point of contact. We talk about the big up and out finish, right? Sometimes you decelerate your bat as you come through the point of contact. We want it once, once those hands go, right? They start in that back position, the load front foot comes down, hips pop. And then those hands are gonna go from that back position, that launch position to fire all the way through to the big finish. And I got some videos to show you at the end of, uh, at the end of this video here. Uh, and then continuing to use the whole field, having that left center gap uh, approach, right? Not being pull happy, using the whole field gap to gap, line to line. So continue to monitor those things. And I gave you uh, a few more things to look at as we go forward. And I'll play the video loops now. Um, and we'll take a look at probably a few of these things as we get into the loop. Uh, three of them, uh, hover and hit. I'll explain what I mean by that. Shoulder to shoulder with the head movement and then finishing the path of the bottom hand. And we'll talk about throwing the Frisbee, uh, something I, I, you know, I continue to bring up. Uh, so let's look at a couple of loops here. Overall, we love your swing. We love what you're doing. It's, 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 there's not a lot of movement. It's compact, not a lot of room for error. Uh, you're quick to the ball, which is great. And uh, we see huge improvements coming. Just want to make a couple of adjust adjustments and tweaks and uh, you know, try to help you out a little bit, avoid some of the miss hits. So let's take a look at, we'll start with this one here. Let me open this up a little bit. Okay, let's watch this loop through. So you're seeing a, lot, a couple rollovers here, um, pop up there. And I want to talk about what I think is leading to a couple of these problems. And I think a lot of it has to do with timing. I think sometimes you're early, sometimes you're late. And part of that I think is because of your load. And I'll pull up the document in a, in a second and pull up you know, the, the language that I'm kind of talking about here in the load. But uh, let me draw on the screen here and show you what I, what I want to focus on here. So in your load here, when you're starting it, let me open it a little bit more so that you can see your feet. Let's see if I get that out of the way, maybe not, okay. So as we start our load here, we're coming through, right? You see you're getting into your backside, which is great. Front foot comes up, you're getting into your knee. We talked about the position of that knee a little bit you know, in the last session, I believe, but um, maintaining balance and staying over that backside and not falling over our front side here, right? So what I wanna work on here is not being uh, kind of you know, falling forward because sometimes what you realize, and it really comes through when we do that uh, two-piece drill, we mix in the fastballs with some of the off-speed pitches, and you end up on your front foot popping some up and you get a little frustrated. We want to work on, you know, staying balanced, not crossing that midline, not going over the front foot. Um, and I think that has to do with the load. So let me pull up some of the uh, language here, and I'll go back to this in a second. So I, I, I call it hover and hit, right? So, so lifting up that front side and not falling forward, right? It's not up, down, it's not lift up, fall down. It's not, you know, lean back, lean forward. It's kind of being able to balance over that back knee, um, get in that back hip and hold that balance until you're ready to hit. Cause you're going to see different velocities. You're going to see different pick, uh, pitches. Um, you're going to see off speed pitches more and more coming up. And you want to be able to maintain that balance, get into that back hip, feel it in that quad, hold that load, and then land the front foot while staying back and being ready to hit, right? It's all about that rhythm, that dance, as I call it, uh, in the sessions. And that has to do with loading in the right places and, and generating balance, right? So when I'm talking about where to load, loading the right places, we're talking about keeping that back knee inside of that back foot, right? Getting that back knee bend, 
and then feeling it in a few areas. And I'll point that out in a second um, on the video. Um, but definitely avoiding that up, down, back, forward kind of approach where it's up, front foot up, then down, falling forward or back and then forward. We want to make sure that we're, we're, we're staying balanced over a midpoint, right? We want to think of it as a rubber band, right? Loading the rubber band, pulling the rubber band back, getting the front foot down, then snapping that rubber band, hips and hands uh, come through. So let me show you in the video what I'm talking about here. I'll draw on the screen for a second. So when we're, when we're getting into this load, we want to make sure that we're at a couple points here. Let me just draw on it here. I'll put some stars on it. We want to make sure that we're inside of the, of the back foot there. We want to make sure that we're inside of that back knee, getting in that back hip, right? Those are our positions where we're going to load. And when you do that correctly, you're going to feel that right here in that quad, okay? And maybe a little bit in the glute as well, but that's where you're going to, you're going to feel that load. And you want to be able to maintain that balance over that back knee, right? With the back knee inside of that back foot for you know, about a second or, or so, maybe a second, second and a half, depending on the timing with the pitcher, how are the pitchers throwing? And then getting that front foot down ready to hit. Um, so when we load, keep that back knee inside that back foot, hover, right, balance, and then front foot down and hit. Not just tip back, tip forward, tip back, tip forward. And, and I'll clear it and, I, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. But I think that's leading to a little bit of timing issues. And I think hitting is all about timing. We wanna make sure that by creating that balance, you know, we can remain on time all the time. Let's watch a couple more swings here. It's kind of back, forward, up, down, back, forward. You see how there's not really a, a balance and a rhythm? And, and I can show you a couple guys who are really, really good at that. Let me pull one of those up now. So one of the guys that's, that's the best at it here is uh, Christian Yelich, right? And he's working on some things on his swing. He's actually changing some things up, which I like. But I love in this slow-mo slow -mo video here, you'll see that he's not up down, right? He, you can tell that he's lifting up that front side and he's getting into that inside of that back knee right there. See him hold it, hold it, load, 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 build the rubber band. And then as soon as the front foot comes down, snap and let the hands and hips go through, right? But he's able to maintain that balance to get that timing right here. Load, hold, 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 and then hit and come through. And I think that's the next step that we have to work on uh, with you not being up, down, robotic, back, forward, right there. Hover, 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 front foot, and then hit, hips and hands, okay? I know we're comparing to Christian Yelich, who's one of the best in the business, you know, but it's, it's a great guy to model after. Um, the, the next thing, the second thing I wanna look at is uh, your head movement, right? Sometimes your head's locked on and you're doing a great job seeing the pitch and you see the ball pretty well, um, but we wanna make sure that we're seeing it the entire distance the ball is going to travel seeing the ball 60 feet, six inches, right? Not 59 feet, not 58 feet, not, not pulling your head out at the last minute. We wanna track it from the pitcher's hands to the point of contact on the barrel, right? And uh, there's a drill we could do, uh, could do going forward where you know, we use balls with colored dots and we're doing front toss or, and, we're, and we're flipping them to you and each ball has a different colored dot in it, red, blue, green, orange. And you're trying to pick up the ball out of the hands and say, oh, as the pitch is coming in blue and hit, right? Green hit, just to make sure you're tracking it all the way. So we call that shoulder to shoulder movement with the head. Now you're gonna start your swing and I'll pull up your, your swing here so you kind of monitor it. Um, let me pull up a different loop here. Okay, right here. And you wanna make sure that you're, you're tracking the ball, you're locked on your front shoulder, kind of the way you are right now. So your head's locked on that front shoulder as you track it to the point of contact, right? You're gonna look it down the barrel, down the hands, down the arms at the point of contact, the moment when a ball mushes into the bat. And then you wanna finish on the back shoulder with your head um, you know, still down basically. And I'll show you how sometimes, some videos you do it, sometimes you don't. It's a little inconsistent. We wanna make sure that we're tracking that ball all the way, 60 feet, six inches. Sometimes your head bobbles and moves and you lose track of that ball and that, that difference, you know, a millimeter difference is going to change where that ball goes. So we're going to work on that balance and the load and we work on seeing the pitch all the way in. Uh, there's a couple of guys who do this really, really well. And I want to show you some of the, some of the things I find on Twitter that, you know, I kind of bookmarked for you here. So let me, let me pull that up one second. So here's one guy that I like, uh, this is Nolan Arenado. He he's, works on it all the time. And, um, you see him here finishing through the baseball 
we talk about shoulder to shoulder, right? This is past the point of contact. He's already made contact. And this is how you finish on the back shoulder. So he's seeing this all the way through onto the back shoulder. And, and you know, there's video of him practicing this all the time. So if you watch this clip here in that card, the red Cardinals uniform now, look how he's not even seeing where the ball traveled. He's getting that swing down, keeping his head down all the way through contact, after contact, watch his head placement. Tracking at 60 feet, six inches. Here's point contact, bang, and keeping his head down all the way. This is a drill he does all the time to make sure that head is not bobbling. Mookie Betts does it very well. The 50 on the back of his helmet never moves. Um, it's all about keeping your head still and seeing the ball, using your eyes. Here's another guy, another young guy on the Braves. You could tell him tracking that ball. Watch his eyes all the way onto the barrel. Not even getting a lot in the lower half. He's working on his eyes. This is Dansby Swanson, shortstop for the Braves, number one overall pick. All about the eyes. The last thing I want to focus on has to do with uh, the finishing the path of the bottom hand, throwing the Frisbee. You know, I talk about the Frisbee a lot. I think a lot of our problems at your age are, has to do with our bottom hand. A lot of us are top hand dominant, which leads to rollovers. So when I say pull the knob, right, I keep saying pull the knob every, every uh, drill, every uh, session. I want to make sure that we're finishing that path, right? We're getting to contact, getting through contact and finishing a follow through. You know, I'm kind of on your case a lot about that follow through. I want to make sure that you're not stopping three quarters of the way, letting those hands finish their path, right? Finish traveling through that path. Um, and sometimes I feel like you get a little top hand dominant at the point of contact. And I'll show you what that means in a second. We want to make sure the top hand is in a supporting role. It's not dominating. There should be balance between both hands. Let that bottom hand go through, pull the knob, inside and in front of that baseball, top pan in support and finishing that path. So here's, a, here's the drill I wanna show you. Let me, let me show you the loop first and then I'll show you the drill. So when I'm breaking down the swing here, you know, I'm noticing that you're getting here, getting through contact. And then right here, watch how the top hand kind of, this, is, this one's a little better actually. That's a pretty good follow through. Let me see how the next swing looks. See, right here is one of the examples, and it leads to a rollover right here. You're about to get to the point of contact here, and then watch this top hand dominate this bottom hand and turn over right here, right? There's no extension. There's no getting through three baseballs. It rolls over, and watch it travel almost on an even, even plane from where the pitch came, right? We're working on that up-and-out finish. We want to finish the path that bottom hand, okay? That, that'll, that'll take away the rollovers. You're going to carry the ball out with you you know, guided by the path of that bottom hand and that knob. I know it's very wordy, but um, in the next session, I could definitely show you a little more of what I'm talking about. But the Frisbee drill is a great way to look at this. This is one of my favorites. I show this all the time. Talking about the path of the, of the bottom hand, it's like throwing a Frisbee. And uh, they'll show a side view in a minute. This is something we could do as well. I'm a big fan of this. But this is kind of how we want to finish through, uh, through contact with the bottom hand. And I'll break it down in a second. But pulling it back in the load, finishing a big up and out follow through. So starting in that back position, getting into launch, launch position, getting to contact right there, and then finishing through contact and letting that hand finish out in front right there, right? Extending through contact. Uh, there's, a, there's a young prospect, number four prospect in baseball, uh, Jared Kalanick on uh, the Mariners. You know, just, I know this swings a lot, but watch, watch that bottom hand. Look where it starts in the, in the low and look where it finishes all the way behind his head, all fully extended out back. Now I know you have a two hand finish, so this is maybe not be, it might not look the same for you, but um, you know, a guy like um, Mr. Bellinger here has a two hand finish, kind of similar to what you do and watch his, watch his hands, watch how they finish. They whip through, they don't decelerate all the way to his back, two handed finish, similar to kind of how I think your finish should be. I don't love his swing. I, don't, I wouldn't teach his swing. It's, it's a little too complex, but the finish and the hand path is very nice. Finish it to your back. So I, I know I'm giving you a lot here uh, just to kind of break it down, what we're looking at here in the next few sessions. Um, hover and hit, hover and hit, right? Find balance in that back leg. Don't be up, down, you know, back forward. Develop, develop that, that, that you know, balance on the backside and then get ready to hit with the front foot down. Shoulder to shoulder with the head movement, okay? Minimize the head movement, 
start on the front shoulder, look through the point of contact, finish on the back shoulder, and then finishing the path of the bottom hand, throwing that Frisbee, getting that bottom hand all the way through and not being top hand dominant. I know it's a lot. I know it's very wordy, but if the language kind of, um, you know, starts here, I think we can carry it into our next session. Um, and a great way to do this, just for a drill, um, whatever you're working on, T-work, front toss, um, if you're working on the head down drill, like Arenado, at the end, hold the pose, hold the finish, like we talk about, right? Don't reset your swing, finish it and just hold it there, right? Where are my hands? Did they finish the path? How's my head? Is my head down, right? Is it on the back shoulder? And you can assess yourself, you know, by holding the pose and holding the finish. Any questions, if you want to reach out to me, I can try to send you back a, a, an email. Uh, my email's right here. And uh, if not, we can talk about it in the next session, but feel free to shoot me an email and I'll explain any of the stuff you don't understand. I know it's a very wordy, a lot of language, but um, I think if we start here and continue to build on it, it'll definitely help you going forward. But you're doing a great job. We love your progress and we love working with you. Keep it up, man.